I'd like to show you something that I don't know that people know about. It's uh, something that deals with masks. People use masks all the time. And I'm going to generate a simple mask here just to, to show. So I have an image. And let's pretend this was an image of something. We're just in pretend land for the moment. I'll show you a real image. Uh, but I'm going to make a mask. Let's pretend there's a galaxy in the middle. So I'm going to make a circular or elliptical mask here by going and using the very nice game script. So there is a repository that is uh, hosted uh, by, um, gosh, now I can't remember. So it's Herbert Walters, Walter Herbert, uh, Herbert Walters. And it, the most of these scripts are written by Harmit Borneman. Uh, get all these, uh, these names correct. So if you look here, you can see the actual, this here is the repository. So you can take a screenshot of that if you want. But the game script, of course, is a game changer for making uh, masks within PixInsight. If you didn't know what it stands for, the, the uh, G stands for generate, E is elliptical, M is mask. I don't know what A is, but it's basically an elliptical mask generator. So I'll start from scratch here. You just add an elliptical thing. You can move it around. You can do whatever you want. But let's say it's right here in the middle. And we add the mask. So I go, OK, um, I'm going to make this. You can do different kinds of masks. I'm going to make this a binary mask. Go OK. And there it is. Now remember, this is my image of something that I'm going to apply this mask to. But what I wanted to indicate is a way to manipulate masks uh, in a particular circumstance. Let's say that I had a galaxy. And I'm going to be showing you this example here in just a moment. So the galaxy is in the center. And let's say that I wanted to increase the saturation, the color saturation of the galaxy. And I also wanted to increase the color saturation of the stars, but not as quickly as the galaxy. See, that's a more subtle distinction. So in other words, it's possible to generate a mask where you can do one uh, process, but apply it to different degrees all in one go. And uh, that just requires a little bit of thoughtfulness. For example, what I could do with this very mask is I could do the following. All we need to do is change the, the color, the brightness of this mask, change the, the blacks and the gray values and the white values. And I'm going to use curves transformation to do it. This is the thing that I don't know that many people know this trick. Um, if I wanted to, say, do 100% of whatever adjustment I wanted, for what is here in white, then I'm going to leave this white because that means that it's going to be 100%. And the black means everything that's black that whenever I apply this to an image, it's all going to be protected. Nothing's going to happen. But I could make it gray. There's an easy way to do that. You can use curves transformation. And all this line indicates here is input versus output. You'll see that in these fields. So if your input and output are equal, you get a nice diagonal line, which means no change. But if I want to, I can take this. Now it's kind of hard to grab here. I can take this and move this here. That means that the minimum input starts at 0.5. And the output's still going to be um, all the way up here at 1. So if I now apply this to the image, I can't get any brighter than white. It's going to stay white. But now I've made everywhere that was black, I've made it gray. And now I have a mask that will do the job that I want it to do. Another cool thing about, and this is very specific to uh, 0.5, to making uh, um, the brightness uh, uh, halfway mid-gray, is that if I want to invert the color scheme here, if I want to make blacks white and white black, I can do it and still keep my gray the same gray value, because the inverse of mid gray is still gray, no change. Um, the quick keystroke, so this is another time saving thing. If you ever need to invert an image, it's control I. By the way, there does exist, and I didn't think to bring it, but there does exist um, a very nice uh, list of all of the keystrokes. I'm only mentioning a couple that I use, but there is a much larger uh, universe of quick keystrokes that. Uh, that exists for PixInsight. Uh, there's a nice chart. Uh, 
Here's control I. Oh, maybe I need to press on the screen here, control I. There, you can see that I'm flipping back and forth, but it doesn't change the gray value. It only changes the white. So that allows me to use this mask to operate in multiple ways. So maybe I need to protect, maybe I don't need to protect. Um, it's a way to think about utilizing masks and manipulating them with the curves transformation by just changing thresholds of beginning points of, in point of inputs or outputs. So let me now try to do this for real. Let's, because it's gonna illustrate another quick thing that saves an awful lot of time. Here's the color image and maybe this is what I want to change or I want to uh, boost the color saturation of this thing. Uh, let me be sure that I am, oh, let me undo that. Yeah, I was making sure this was not a linear image. I, and it's not. This is what I got when I do the initial color combine. So let's uh, turn off the auto screen stretch here. Yes. So this is what I had when I initially combined the image. And let's just say I wanted to increase the color saturation more of the galaxy than of the stars. Well, let's get a star mask. So I just have stars to work with. Uh, the first thing to do perhaps is to make a grayscale image of this thing, because that's what I can use to generate a kind of star mask. Now there is a star mask process, but that's not what I'm gonna use. What I'm gonna demonstrate is what I think is the fastest way to make a star mask, which is another process called MLT, multi-scale linear transfer. This is a fantastic way to make star mask. I already have it set up there, but I'll start from zero. The idea is that these layers refer to size, kind of scale sizes within this image of contiguous brightness things. Uh, so a galaxy is very large. It's a large scale thing. It has contiguous brightnesses of stuff. So it's gonna be seen as something big. Stars are relatively small by comparison. So if we just make sure we have lots of uh, scales to choose from here, I want to only have in the result after I apply this, I only want there to be stars, basically. So what layers might stars be? Well, two, three, four, five, six. So you can see the pixel dimensions here, maybe up to 16 pixels, but not beyond. It's a good place to start. So I just turn all of these off. This, these layers should basically correspond to stars and all this other stuff bigger is probably the galaxy. If you apply this, that's it. You pretty much have a star mask, at least almost, now let's zoom in and look in detail. You'll probably see there's still some galaxy stuff, but here's the important part. The galaxy stuff is not quite like a star because as it is represented here in this newly formed image, it's not as bright as many of the stars that interest us. And we can use that threshold of brightness to further distinct, uh, uh, make a discrimination between what is a star and what isn't. Anything that still shows up uh, that might be really bright parts of this galaxy because there are H2 regions that are star-like. Well, they are actually star-like, and, and maybe we don't want those parts to have, if we're going to increase the color saturation, we want those to increase more slowly than the galaxy. So that's still okay. What you do then is you can get out, uh, a, this is a number of ways to do it, but I'm going to use binarize here. When you click with the binarize tool, watch what happens to the number the number gets updated. So wherever you click becomes your threshold. So I can click on a galaxy part here. And let's say that that's my threshold. Everything beneath this number of 0.2 in terms of brightness in this image will become black and anything above this number will be just stay or become white. And you'll notice now, 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 I have very little in the way of galaxy. Maybe some of these little blips refer to some of the H2 regions, but basically this is a star mask. So in two steps, MLT followed by binarize without any computation. I mean, it, the computation is in two seconds. I have a nice star mask. That is something I like. Now you still need to, as you would normally do, manipulate the star mask. So what I might do, I actually have it open over here, is you can get a morphological transformation this will allow us to dilate. We want to grow these things, make them a little bit bigger. And uh, I don't know, a size of seven seems fine. So you can grow them like that. 
Uh, and then finally, the last little thing you typically do, not always, but it depends. Um, you might want to soften with convolution. It's a blurring thing. We can soften the uh, edges of stuff. Uh, if that's too much, you can do a little less here. You can you know, lessen this, whatever you feel is good. And now I have basically a star mask. That's it. That's how you'd make a star mask. This is what I would apply to here. When you apply as a mask, you don't do like we did before. This would uh, transfer this zoom and position uh, and make these two images match, which is nice, but that's not what I want. I want to apply it as a mask, which means I put it over, uh, not on the tab, but beneath the tab in the margin. And the tab becomes brown, which means we are applying a mask. I'm not showing it though, even though it is applied, you go to the mask menu, you can show the mask and that shows where it is. I don't find that as useful. I know where it is because I have all this stuff here. Uh, and at this point, now you can actually take advantage of what I was uh, talking about a moment ago, where if I wanted to increase the color saturation of the galaxy, I don't necessarily have this the right color because what I really want to do is somewhat protect the stars and not the galaxy. So I would use control I, now it's becoming handy. Now I'm protecting stars and not the galaxy. The changes that I make here are instantly, there. This, there's a connection between the mask that's being applied and anything I do here. So if I change this, it is changed here as it's being applied to this image. And then uh, you know I can get out a process of something I want to do. And maybe the thing that I want to do is color saturation, looking for it uh, here. And if I just raise the color saturation, you know, just across the board like this, that should do an increase of color. It wasn't a major increase, but it was an increase. So here's before, here's after, you know, maybe I do it again or something. Now I've really bumped it up. But the stars have not really increased their color much at all. And maybe we don't want that much color, but if we wanted the star color to, I'm gonna back up. If you wanted to the star color to increase a little bit more, instead of regenerating that mask, well, you now know the trick. What I can do is I can come to curves transformation, wherever that is here. Uh, and maybe I make them not quite as, I don't need to be 50%, but maybe I make it like this and I apply that here. That changes the stars, right? And now as I apply my color saturation a couple of times or whatever, now I have more star color showing up in the stars as well as the, you can see the blue and the orange here, yellow, as well as the color that's showing up in the galaxy. So that's what I wanted to demonstrate. Uh, just a, a nice way to manipulate masks, a nice way to make a star mask a nice way to interact with an image very quickly without having to go through too many machinations. The thing that is often complained about in PixInsight is that, you know, masks are kind of unwieldy compared to other programs like Photoshop or something. And at some level that's true uh, depending upon the complexity of the mask, but there are ways of manipulating the thresholds of things, which is what I just demonstrated, that are really simple and easy to do. So keep that in mind.